It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world. As we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas, discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. I've always been fascinated with photography, especially wildlife. Today, we'll meet Greg Storms, owner of Mockingbird Photography. He'll give us an in-depth look into the art of wildlife photography as we visit La Jara Ranch and Estero Llano Grande State Park. But first, he's going to teach me the basics. So sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, Greg, I'm so glad that you're here because I really need to learn a little bit more about this camera and using this big lens. I have a Canon in 70D and you have a Nikon and you have we have pretty much the same lens. So I really need this. Okay. So let's, let's get started. All I'm right. gonna take notes, a few notes. All right. The thing is you need to understand some of the basics and light is absolutely necessary for photography. So you need to understand how you, you get light in and the right amount. It's similar to, let's say that you want, wanted a bucket full of water. Okay? okay, and let the water represent the light, and the bucket represent the amount that you need. You need a full bucket of water. Well, you could use a small tube to allow the water to come in. It's going to take a long time to fill up the bucket. Or you can use a large hose, and it'll fill up the bucket quickly, time-wise. Same thing is true with a camera. When you have a small aperture, which is the opening that is allowing the light in, if it is small, then it's going to take longer for enough light to come in to give you a properly exposed picture. Oh, I see. If it is wide open, then you can have a faster shutter speed, which means you're just taking in the light much more quickly. Okay, so the smaller it is, the less light that comes in and the longer, it takes longer, longer for shutter, speed. shutter speed. I understand that now. Okay. Okay. Now, the difference between a small aperture opening and a large aperture opening is now going to be your depth of field. Yes. Okay? And depth of field means mm -hmm. how much of the picture is in focus from front to back. Oh, okay. Okay. If you use a large opening and take the light in quickly, then you're going to have a very narrow depth of field. It's going to basically, sometimes, even, let's say you're photographing a bird, it may be that the front of the bird is in focus, but by the time you get to the tail feathers, it's, it's a little bit blurred or the bokeh. And that it, happens. Yes. And again, that's because of the uh, aperture opening. Oh, now, I, I've heard some pro photographers say that uh, 8 is great. In other words, setting your camera at f8 is hmm. going to give you a uh, good depth of field. However, if your subject is close, then you're going to still have may, possibly more depth of field than you really want. Okay, I had a lot of problems yesterday. I got this lens and just got it in the mail not too long ago. And we went to shoot these baby birds in the nest. Well, there was so much little twigs and branches there in the way. Well, I never got a real good shot. It would, uh, and I'm going to go try it again today after this, so. There are going to be times that you, there's no way around it unless you change and you say, okay, I got to get down and shoot this way and that way. I'm going to shoot kind of under those branches and my, my view is going to not include all those branches, but you, you've got to, do all that composition before you ever press the shutter. Wow. And, and look, move your camera, rotate it on your tripod. Okay. As you look through your viewfinder, look for the most clear opening. Okay. Now, it's nice to have the branches framing because that, that's a, a good composition where, yes, where you can yes, frame. I understand that. But if they're somewhat out of focus, that helps too because now your eye's not drawn to this branch or that one on the left or the right of the bird. I see why now. So far, I can understand why, what mistake I've made. Let's, okay. let's keep going. Let me see. What else? The nice thing about a long lens is 
that also, if you changes, it compresses your uh, depth of field. So it, it, it makes things look closer. Wow, yes. Uh, it, it changes. So it, you can get away with a little bit higher when something's close. Okay, tell me a little bit about exposure. Okay, we've set your camera on aperture priority, which means that you can change your aperture. You should be able to see that your speed, as the f-stop goes up and your opening is getting smaller, your length of time is going to get longer and longer. So it, will ta it takes longer to take the picture. Yes. Now F22 is great for landscapes. Now you want a great deal of your shot in focus. It's not like you're photographing that bird on the nest I understand where all you want now. is the bird. I understand. A person that I assist and I learn a great deal from, and her name is Ruth Hoyt, I, I think yes. he, mutual acquaintance. Yes. And Ruth is always saying, watch the edges. Yes. Watch the edges and make sure you don't have something coming in because that'll, you'll wonder why is my photograph not as interesting as this other person who took it? Well, look at the edges or look at where is the placement of your subject. Don't place something generally. You can always break rules in photography, but only when it really emphasizes a point. Generally, you don't want to center your subject in the frame. Right, the rule of thirds. Rule of thirds, exactly. No targets. Exactly. That, that I, I learned from okay. Ruth Hoyt. She did right. tell me that. And, and that's a, a big benefit. And, and I know uh, many kids, when they start out, that's what they do. You know, whether it's with an iPhone or, yes. or a point and shoot, they're going to center it because it's the easiest. You know, that's, mm -hmm. you get it in the middle. But eventually, you become a little more creative and, and add some interest to your uh, photographs. Wow, now I can't wait to get out there and use this lens and use it correctly. I, I can see where I made the mistakes here, more than one. We're gonna go get ready and go outdoors and finish up this uh, mini lesson, but you're gonna see major improvement okay, after good. this. Thank and remember you so to tuck much. your pants in this time. Oh, yes. <laughs> When we return, we'll visit Lajara Ranch and capture some amazing birds in their natural habitat. Hold on to your hat, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Just east of Raymondville, Texas is La Jara Ranch, home to a wide variety of wildlife. Before we started taking pictures, I spoke to Greg about the history of the area. Tell me the name of this ranch. Okay, it's La Jara. La Jara Ranch. And it's going to be developed, this portion is going to be developed into a nature uh, dedicated to nature, whether it's butterflies or insects or plants or birds or any other critters that are out here. So it's a little bit of everything. And where does La Jara come from? Is it J-A-R-R-A? -R -R -A? Yes. And what does that mean? And that means water pitcher. Oh, okay. And it had what to do that? with uh, Mr. Raymond's coming here and, and getting the ranch and if he could get water and so forth and he's, he's something to, with a reference to the pitcher, you know, a pitcher of water from the springs up near San Antonio. So that's where that came from and that's how he got that. Uh, what are we going to be looking at today here? Well, we, we've got a number of things. We can show you things that are in the process of being developed. We can show you some of the areas that where there are going to be blinds and I have a pop-up blind in one of those areas. This property, which is 500 acres, is also going to include a senior center for the people that have Alzheimer's and, and uh, like dementia. Like a relaxation place or something. Yeah, or yeah, uh, like a treatment treatment center type there thing. There we go, okay. And then there also will be places for those people that, let's say you're 55 and you just want a place to retire, you don't want to retire in a condo in the middle of a city, so, but you would like to live out in the country, but you would like to have a facility to do that and where there's some other things. Who owns this property? 
This is uh, owned by the Wettergroves. Uh, Joe Wettergrove is, is the one that I actually work for and, he, and he's the one that hired me. It, you know, it, it was interesting. Four years ago, we were on a tour uh, from uh, Wild and Willisey. Okay. And we were traveling around and he said he owned a ranch somewhere. And I said, really? And I said, where do you own it? And he says, well, do you know that pond out across from the cemetery? He said, that's the front of the ranch. I said, really? And my interest was, I was, I just asked him if I could have permission to walk beyond the, the uh, little platform, because technically I knew that was where you were supposed to go and not beyond. And he said, I've watched you work. Yes, I'll give you permission. Well, later that afternoon, he called me and asked me to come out here. And before the end of the day, I walked off with the combination to the, so I could get in any time I wanted to. Yeah. Well, I'm all excited about this. Okay, let's, great. Let's go. Let's go. I can't wait to start taking pictures. Greg has been an amazing photography instructor as well as a great guide. I've gone into blinds on other ranches. I got it. Let me go. Where there were um, big, uh, huge black widows hanging from the ceiling. Well, please don't tell me. I'm really afraid of spiders. We position ourselves in the blind so the birds wouldn't see or hear us. The last step was selecting the right lenses. Yeah, something coming. I hear them. It sounds like blackbirds coming. And they're pretty bold because they've gotten used to me. Yeah. Really? I'm going to lower this just a tad. It's got a red head. Yeah, that's that's the male. The female's wow. all yellow. And the gold, the, when it says gold in front, uh -huh. it has nothing to do with the color of the head. Right at the tip of its beak, uh -huh. where it goes into the head, there's a, it's yellow, like a yellow wow. spot between its eyes. Yeah. On the bill. Oh, interesting. And that's how it gets it. When it flies at you, that's the yellow front, the golden front end. The red oh, one. That's awesome. Wow, two, two of them. Yeah, they're awesome. They're upset with each other. They don't want each other there. There's a dove. Was it kind of a whitish color? It had no tan and then white. On the wings? Yes. It's a white wing. White winged dove. What's always brought lots of people to the valley for hunting. That's it, yeah. But usually there'll be, I'm surprised the rabbit hasn't come back out. There it is. <laughs> Speak of the devil. Keeping track of each other. I think that's what I saw their head out there in the grass. Greg's photos looked amazing. You can really see the passion he puts into photography. Bill Thrasher. And they have really golden eyes. Yeah, Working here has been such a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just uh, has made retirement that much better. This is fun. I love this. Actually, I was looking for one of these blinds. Wildlife. It's not just birds. No. You do all kinds of photography. Yeah. That is awesome. I have taken pictures of uh, snakes uh, breeding and fighting, wow. and the males fighting over a female. They they were uh, 
How close were you? You were in the blind. Oh, no. This was up at the house on one of the front steps. Oh, my goodness. Or just next to a tree. Ooh, kill that spider. You got it? Yeah. Oh, good, it was huge. If there's one thing that's essential to being a great wildlife photographer, it's patience. Yeah, that's perfect. That's like studio lighting when the sun comes out like God, that. I hope so. Look at that. Moving. That's nice. Wow, the bird seed really did the trick. I really was learning a lot from Greg. Stay tuned for some more outdoor fun. Hold on to your hat. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Just from riding with Greg, I can see that he knows all the great bird watching sites. As we were getting ready to snap a photo, we found ourselves looking at a nighthawk's nest on the ground. You really never know where your next photo is going to come from. It's important not to make too much noise. You just have to concentrate on taking an amazing picture. We even spotted a killdeer scurrying across the brush. Sometimes with smaller creatures like insects, it really helps to get down to their level. We also spotted a great kiskadee in its natural habitat. What is that? There's one of its eggs. Oh, wow. That's one of the killdeer eggs. Greg told me that these locations would be perfect for bird blinds in the future. Towards the end, I was starting to feel like a professional photographer. Next, we stopped by Estero Llano Grande State Park. There were many blackneck stilts in a nearby wetland marsh. Greg showed me how to adjust the camera for the best possible shot. I'd like to thank Greg Storms for taking the time to show me what professional photography entails. If you're interested in photography lessons, call Mockingbird Photography at 956-454 0481. Special thanks to La Jara Ranch and Estero Llano Grande State Park. I'll leave you with some of Greg's phenomenal photography. Until next time! <laughs>